Hey everyone, uh, I kind of want to talk about a weird issue uh, with the computer here. And to give you some background, let's dive back into the the MSI 88 or 8080 replica. So Dave, at the, uh, known as the High Nibble, designed this kit some time ago. I built one. There was a number of videos on the channel, and a lot of people have built these very successfully. It's a great kit. I'm super impressed with the kit, the packaging, the quality. Uh, just an amazing kit for the price. You know, if you're looking for an MSI 8080 cloned machine to play that has a real front panel and all those things, this is definitely a great way to go. Inevitably, when you sell kits, somebody will run into an issue with one of the kits. It, it just happens. You know, it can be an assembly mistake, uh, maybe a bad circuit board, bad component, whatever. Th those things happen. Uh, one of the builders here in the U.S., a gentleman named Tom, built his up and ran into a really odd issue that we'll look at here in a couple of minutes. Uh, Dave worked with him via email, and they couldn't resolve it. And Dave reached out to me and because I'm in the U.S. and asked if I could uh, engage with Tom. We did a bit of troubleshooting, and finally Tom just boxed it up and sent it to me. And, and the behavior is fascinating for the way the machine behaves. Uh, we'll see that in a minute, but uh, you know, if you're interested in building one of these, it's a great kit. I, you know, don't let this video turn you off to building one of these. Uh, occasionally, kits go bad; it just happens. It's reality. Uh, Dave's having great success with this. You know, great product. His software just makes this product so fantastic. So even though you've got the full hardware emulation with the switches and the LEDs. You get into this software package that he delivers where you can see disks and mount them and, and just do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing uh, emulator. Uh, it just is. It, it just blows my mind with it. The, the software that he's bundled with it just makes this thing really incredible. Uh, if we get in here to, let's see, features, step-by-step -step assembly guide. You know, lots of warnings there always are. Assembly is pretty straightforward. It's just a bunch of components that you solder onto the board in the right places and, and right orientations. He takes you through this. I, you know, I built mine on camera. I've got a bunch of videos up if you wanted to look at those as well. And he just kind of walks you through the build and the test. So let's just at this point, I'll pause here and we'll play the video from Tom and let you see what we're talking about. Okay, Dave, there's a ghost in the machine. <laughs> I think it's something something on this chip. It's either the chip or the LED, but as we get close to it, it, it uh, responds. Ch try the other chips. See if the other chips do it. Mm, not so much. Not so much. It definitely seems like it's in that area. Yeah. That LED doesn't do I'm on the other three. So Dave, we're going to have to call chip. a priest. We're going to have to have the board exercised. <laughs> So now that we've seen the video and the interesting action on the board as Tom moves his thumb around uh, the board and the LEDs behave in weird ways, I had a number of ideas what this issue could have been. I tried to work a couple of them, like I say, via email with Tom. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. You know, before you jump into uh, you know a later video on this, I'm curious to hear your thoughts, what you think is going on here. It, it's an interesting issue. I still haven't fully explained it. But I'm not going to say anything more beyond, give it some thought. I'd love to hear your comments on what you think was going on here. Um, we'll pick up with investigating this issue and hopefully repairing it in a future video.